Okay, so um, let's start off here. Yeah. So you wanted to, basically, I go from the beginning and... Yeah, as if we were showing this to somebody that's never seen Grid Calculator Pro. Okay, got it. So when you install the plugin, you're going to get a menu here. And you yeah. sim and simply uh, can go here and select Activate Plugin. Either you have a license or demo. Now, wait a second. One, one thing. I'm seeing you, but I'm not seeing your screen. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah. let me go ahead and screen my sh share my screen. Ah, there we go. Okay, okay. So uh, let's take it from the beginning here again. So yeah. now yeah. that you're seeing everything, um, Perfect. so when you install the plugin, you're going to get a menu here called Designer's Bookshop. The first thing you should do is just simply activate the plugin. So either you're going to do it as a 30 day demo or with a license. So you just click on this and it brings up the activator application. And you enter your first name, last name, email for demo or license, you uh, uh, enter the license additionally. So after that, you simply go here and select open plugin and it's going to open the plugin here. So we have a few different sections here. Now, module and smart are linked together. So I, I can jump between them and quick is something else. Now, what's good to know is when you work with module and smart, you're going to follow the grid from edge to edge. You cannot uh, define the margins going to start here. So you're locked to the document grid. Uh, when you're working with quick mode, uh, it's sort of the same thing, but you also have the option of defining where you want your margins to begin with a value. So let me just go ahead and show you some stuff. So if I enter my desired letting here, let's say 12 points, it's always going to be tw uh, points in this field. Mm -hmm. And then we have the width and height of the document, and that is dependent on what units I select here. Right. But I'm going to work in millimeters here, but you might as okay. well work in inches if you want. So does doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter. And the other thing that's good to know is that this field here, so let's zoom in here. Now, if I only enter the letting here, we are going to get small squares that are proportional to the document because it's slicing it the same amount of times vertically and horizontally. So yep. let me just demonstrate something here. If I draw a small little square here, I'm going to be able to uh, resize this to fit perfectly on the entire document because it's the same proportion. So it's yep. going to fit perfectly when I lock the um, width yep. and height and resize. So yep. to move on to the next field here, now let's say that you want to have um, you want to edit the width of the grid. Now, sometimes maybe you want to have a different gutter value for your columns. And uh, in this case, we can already see what the value here is in millimeters. It's three millimeters for the grid width. And it's the same for horizontal module. That's what it actually means. The grid that width. means that means each square is three millimeters wide. Is that? Yeah. So let me go yeah. ahead and just show you that. Yeah. Uh, so if yeah, make, let's make a box. And we can see three millimeters for the width. Right. Yeah. So that's right. really right. what it's uh, what it's for. And, right. But let's say that you want to have a different value for some reason. And let's sh switch to inches just for the American audience to okay. uh, understand it easier. So if you were to say a value that, you know what, I want to have a closest value as well, give me a value, something that's close to this. Since I'm not used to working in inches, I'm going to just let you tell me a value that's very close. For now, this value is... Uh, now it is in inches because when I switch here, right. if we look at the values, we have width and height and right. grid width. They will always show you the value of the selected unit in the drop down. Right. Letting is the only one that is really fixed to points. So it doesn't matter. It will never change. But if I, if you look at these, this, this, yeah. and this field, they will change depending uh, on what the unit is. Yeah. So now in inches, in millimeters, it was three millimeters. In inches, it's 0 0.118. So okay. if we do 0 0.12 and I press calculate, it's going yeah. to give me, in this case, it fit perfectly. 
But let's ah. say I, I do, I, I edit it to 0 0.125 yeah. and I tab away. Ah, oh, <laughs> everything seems to be fitting perfectly. Uh, yeah. I'm just going to get some. Okay. Uh, no well, problem. now, okay, let me stop you for a minute. Yeah. Because it says that the document size is 8.268 by 11 and whatever. 693, right? yeah. So that's that's not a standard. No, this is European. Right. This is A4 D I N, oh, okay. but it's not letter or it, where, it's not an American size. It's uh, So where European. do I Yeah, but now where you, is that size coming from? Uh, that drop down? Yeah, so let me show you what where that size come from. I'm going to close the document. Okay. And if we go to document setup, yeah. This is the default. So right. it's those values that you just saw in the plugin is being loaded from the ah. default setting here. So ah. this is in millimeters, but it represents the same values in inches. So uh, if I go ahead and change this to letter. Change it to letter. Letter. Yeah. Okay. okay. Right. That's okay. And then it's going to be smart enough to load it in inches and these values. I see. So it's really just uh, loading the setting from the document setup okay. default. So okay. let's go ahead and change this to 12 points. Um, yeah. So, okay. Um, okay, so we were talking about the grid width. So if right. I do like... I don't know, 0 0.2. No idea if that's going to fit. Well, now, how, how is the user supposed to know what to put in for grid width? Yeah, uh, I'm going to uh, touch on that in just one second. Uh, okay. I want to show you that we can see that the value here to the right is the applied value as close as possible to what is right. actually applicable. Right. So 0 right. 0.2 would actually not fit perfectly. It would go beyond the document edge. Okay. So, what you're actually saying here when you're entering this value here is saying, give me either exactly this value or something as close as possible. As close as, close yeah. as mathematically possible. Yeah, so uh, this is the document grid. So it's always going to be edge to edge. So right. uh, 0 0.2 doesn't fit, but it's the closest value is 0 0.198. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to switch over to millimeters because it's I'm having a, a difficult time thinking in inches. That, but that's the, fine. That's fine. That's yeah, fine. I think the method is the same, so it's not yeah. going to be any problem. So if I go ahead yeah. and click undo here, it's going to yeah. go ahead and uh, uh, apply the proportional value. Just as I showed ah. you earlier, three millimeters. So um, let me go ahead and clear that. Uh, okay, so you asked me how do you know what value you want to have. Yeah. So, so now we have a grid width of three millimeters. Now let's say that the user wants to have a four millimeters for their column gutter, for example. Okay. Okay. So uh, because it follows the document grid, let me show you here. I'm going to jump over to margins, columns, and rows. And yeah. let me just play quickly with the side margins. And let me find this. Okay, we have two columns here. But let's say that the client or me as a designer, I want to have something. I want to have four millimeters. I want to have three millimeters. I want to have a different value for my gutter. Now, okay. what the plugin does when you when you work in this way, I'm also going to show you how to define your own margins. But when we're doing it this way, um, you might want to have a different value for your gutter. So right. in order to be able to edit that, what you want to do is you want to edit the document grid in this case mm -hmm. the document grid width because the columns and margins and everything is going to align to it mm -hmm. this is the reason so you might want to have more space you want to have less space this is where you're going to control it through the grid width so that's one area for example or, okay yeah or okay. you could also say that you know what i want my margins to be based on this uh, common denominator value for example uh um i want my margins to be uh five uh, 25 millimeters then if i yeah. go ahead and let's see if it works with five okay we have five here right uh, i just entered that so we have five for the grid width and i already know yeah. in my head five times two ten fifteen twenty twenty five so on. so yeah. so it's almost like the little building block that you're always keeping in mind what mm -hmm. is my space 
uh, what it's going to be my margins and so on. So it's that's why the document grid is so powerful because if you want everything to align, you can do it that way. Now let me ha go ahead and show you uh, if you want to define your own margins. So that's good to have both these in mind because sometimes um, you might have a value for your margins and it's impossible to make it fit in the document grid because uh -huh. the client has defined it's 25.2 millimeters period. Uh -huh. You're just going to do yeah. it. Yeah. So what you're going to do in that case, when you can't find anything, uh, you can go ahead and click or check the value field or box. Here. Uh -huh. Yeah. Now this is going to enable these fields. Now, normally they are disabled and you're jumping in increments of the grid width for the side. Uh, right. But yeah. in this scenario, you're going to check this box and you're going to say, you know what? I want a 25.2 millimeters. It's going to give you that exact value. Uh, so even if you're not a grid nerd, you just want something quickly. Right. You can use this if you're if that's the way you want to work, you can do it. So it really caters to both the one that really wants to follow the grid hardcore and yeah. set up your margins based on the document grid. Or if you want to set up your margins as the first thing you do. So um, let's uh -huh. also set up the outside margin. Now in right. this scenario, the columns and the sub columns are going to be disabled because we're breaking the side grid. So nice. we're going to jump over to custom setup because when we're doing it like this, we can actually define our own columns. So if I just use my up and down arrows, I can go yeah. four or five. So what's really cool is we can, we have not applied any gutter. So let's, let's go ahead and just apply any value. Okay. 3.5 millimeters. Okay. And what you're not going to get from InDesign, but you're going to get from uh, the plugin, for example, unless you measure it manually, is the width of each column. So we can uh -huh. see that the width is 54.267 millimeters. Yeah. Now let's just switch over to inches and we can see the values here. Okay. So uh, a really cool thing that is really not possible with the plugin is I'm going to show you the layers panel here. And let's say you want to set up a grid within the type area. Now this is not possible in, uh, unless you're going to drag your own guides. So, yeah. So uh, let's say I want to get something as close as possible as to 3.5. So I'm just going to enter random number, okay. 50 lines from left to right. And uh, you can see that these uh, gray guides were applied. Uh -huh. And it's also created a layer, so I can see the guides and un, right. un, un, uh, check them. Yeah. So uh, we can see that uh, it almost fits perfectly with our columns here. So if I zoom in, there is a little gap. It's not perfect, but I'm pretty sure that if I go ahead and take this value, 3.396 yeah. millimeters, yeah. and I enter it here, it's it should fit. It fit perfectly. So. Um, hmm. it's a very quick way to, wow. yeah. So let, let's say you want to have something else. You want to have smaller or, or a less, uh, grid width. So I could go ahead okay. and increase the numbers. The more I slice off the area, yeah. the, the less they are, the less space is going to have. So you can see if I really go up to like almost over 60 lines, you're going to see that they are, uh, they have less in, in the grid width here. Yeah. So let's say I want to find something so I can either play around with the, with this value here until I find something that mm -hmm. almost aligns, but I can see that even if I edit, it's not gonna, uh, yeah. yeah. So what I need to do is I can go ahead and I can fine tune the grid until I find, okay. So, there's something here if I just play yeah. so I can see what the value is 2.612.612. Right. Okay, it fit perfectly. So if you go ahead and you just do some minor adjustments to either the gutter or the number of uh, guides you're going to have for your uh, type area grid uh -huh. or both, uh -huh. then you can get a perfect match. Okay. So even if your client says, you know what, these are fixed margin values and you're the type that really want to have a document grid, 
<clears throat> because maybe you want to uh, be able to say you want to place images freely, but you still want to have some kind of right. grid or guidance where, where you place stuff. So you can still have a grid within the type area. So that's yep. one benefit of using the plugin. Yeah. Uh, so now you've seen that we have both the way of following the grid hardcore or defining our margins. Um, I want to show you something else. We can also do the top. I mean, let yeah. me just say, let me just say one thing. <clears throat> the way that I work as a designer is, and I think, I think most designers work this way, but I don't know, is what you set up the document with the margins that you want first. Yeah. Right. You you <clears throat> figure out oh I want this on the outside and this on the inside and I need a bottom that's this and then and then the job is to always figure out how to then make that grid within that live area yeah and so um, I I understand your point so are are you saying or you're thinking that you know what I want to have a document grid from edge to edge and I still want to have uh, no, I don't really care about a document grid from edge to edge. I only care about the grid within the live area. Okay, the, the type area grid or whatever. The type area, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't care about anything that's outside of that because um, because I just don't. Yeah, I don't. yeah but th there's really th there are different ways of working. So whatever works yeah. for you works for you. Okay. So uh, was there a question within that sentence that I missed because – no, I just want to make sure that it's, I mean, I think that most designers work this way, uh, and maybe you can give me a good reason not to work this way. Maybe it's easier to set up a grid f that goes edge to edge first and then build the margins based on, on, the, on the full page grid. Um, sometimes it is easier and sometimes it's not. So let me give you a, an example. Um, chances of being able to enter a 25.2 millimeters is, uh, it could be very, very difficult. So in the scenario where you maybe have a client says that this is the exact value and you simply cannot get it to work by, by creating yeah. the document grid because it will not align with the document grid. In yeah. that case, it could be much easier to do it. Sometimes, if you know what value you want to have for your margins, you could easily find the uh, common denominator value. For example, if you say, you know what, I want 25 millimeters, then you already right. know that if you have a grid width of 5 or 2.5, it will work. It's just the multi multiplying that value, that, uh, yeah. that small grid width. But I want to show you some other ways of creating layouts that in some cases it might be easier to have a document grid from edge to edge. Okay. So, um, but before I do that, I want to go ahead and show you something else. So let's jump back to the document setup because we are still following the document grid from t uh, top to bottom. Yeah. So if I go back here and we can say that we entered a value of 12 points. Now, sometimes uh, you um, you might want to have the exact value that you entered. You don't want something that's going to be like this 12.027 uh -huh. points. You want 12, period. Right. Yeah. So what you can do that you cannot do in Modular Smart is you can simply go ahead and uncheck this checkbox here, fit letting. Now, the value that is in this field is always the final baseline grid value. Right. So we enter 12, and since we have a fit letting checked, which is the default mode, it's going to give us 12.027 points or whatever fits in that document height. If I go ahead and uncheck this, it's going to give me 12 exactly. Now, the way it's able to do that is by offsetting a little bit at the bottom. So it's actually counting ah. from here up yeah. to the top. So if I go ahead and look at the margins, we can see that we have not really moved our margins. So the zero position is 0 0.667. Yeah. So it's not going to be, let me go ahead and check this again. It's not the edge of the, of the page. Yeah, but it's not, it's, it's, uh, it's still zero. We have not applied anything. 
But okay. when I go ahead and uncheck that, it moves it up. So it's really applying a small value to give it a new starting position for the bottom margin. So yeah. if I go ahead and edit this, uh, let me let me set it to points and pixels. You're gonna see that this is 12.027 points for the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, and multiply by two, three, four, and so on. Ah. Now, let's go back again to, um, to uncheck fit letting and go to margins again. Now, let's see here, uh, in points, the value is 1.89. So mm -hmm. if I go ahead and give it, it should be something around 13.89 mm. because the value is 12 plus I, 189 gives us 13.89. I see. So it's really just uh, pushing up the uh, start position for mm -hmm. the bottom margin, but it's going to give you that exact letting value that you want. Yeah. But the beauty of, uh, uh, of this uh, one, one thing of the plugin is that let's say that your client has also defined your top and bottom margin. Now, now it gets tricky because you want to have a letting that's going to um, yeah. align perfectly from top to bottom. And you can't just enter any value. It's not going to work no. mathematically. Right. So right. this is where the beauty comes with, the, with this plugin. So okay. if I go ahead and check value for the top and bar, bottom margin, I'm going to switch over to millimeters here quickly. And let's say I want 15 and I want 20 millimeters for my bottom. Now, just okay. for reference, I'm going to switch over to inches and you can get a sense okay. uh, for the values. Okay. So let's switch back to millimeters. And now let's go back to quick mode here again. And we can see that the value that's going to fit perfectly within these set margins, top and bottom, is 11.979. Right. So you don't have to do any kind of recalculation or anything from your end. You're just going to define, this is the margins that I want. Give me a letting that's going to fit perfectly within this as close to my desired value. So yeah. no manual calculations or ugly offsets at the bottom or anything like that. Okay. Let me stop for just one second. Sure. If I'm creating paragraph styles that snap to a baseline grid, yeah. I need to set up in design to uh, to that to that value to that eleven point nine seven nine. Yeah, but one thing, I, another thing with the plugin that I really like is that it does this for you automatically. You don't ha never have to do it yourself. Oh, oh, so, is that true? I did. Yeah. Okay. So right. in the paragraph styles, it's creating a folder called Oh uh, yeah, body copy. Right. Right. So we don't have to do anything ourselves so what we can do is we can go to paragraph and character style section here okay. and let me place some text here okay so what it does it automatically locks to the plugin uh, to the baseline and if I want to edit the style now I just want to have uh, this mention that uh, if you want to change your font and the style and size and and basically the basic character formats, don't do it through this dialogue, do it through the plugin, ah. because when you're applying the image, ah. elements, it's not going to update correctly. So it's going to be, yeah. yeah, it's not going to be able to send the signal back. So it's, it's going to still think that you're in this old font. So, um, but all okay, the yeah. other, all the other stuff you can change, but just yeah. avoid editing the basic character formats. Do the, okay. do that here and okay. you don't really need to go in here because you have all the other stuff here. So okay. if I want to change, say the font size, I'm going to edit that. If I want to change, uh, let's say I can actually type here. So it will give me the different font. Okay. Yeah. So let okay, me go that, ahead. that's important. Yeah, that's really important. Now, let me go ahead and show you something that uh, is really, really powerful uh, because uh, you're going to be playing around with your letting. You're going to find that what really looks good. You might print, print it out. You don't want to yeah. have to do recalculations all the time. So let's say that you've already uh, decided that, you know what, I want 10 points for my body copy, but I'm not really sure about my letting value. So what you can do is you can you can. Basically, you use the up and down arrow keys for the letting. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. and it's going to recalculate within those set margins the new uh, perfect oh, values. So let's right. say, you know what, I want something close as possible, 12.5. It takes a few seconds, a lot of recalculations, but yeah, you can see wow. that the value is 12.0, 12 12.588. I see. So it's really, really fast to, if you're playing with text and everything, and uh, it's going to re, uh, it's going to snap to the baseline grid. Yeah. So regardless if I'm changing here, let's, say, let's give it a really grotesque value, 16. I don't okay. have to go into the paragraph style, edit it, and no, no, it does all that for you in it a does. single in a single action. So, so if if you go now and you open the paragraph style it, it dialog, be, it it'll say 16, sixteen. Yep, it will. Oh, I see, and there it is, sixteen point one. Yeah, it does four. everything right. for you. You don't have to wow. open, okay. set this. So it's really really fast to set up your layouts. Okay, that's where I was, I think, getting confused before, was I didn't understand that you need to do it through the plugin and, and not try to do it the other way. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So it's very, very easy. Okay. Yes. So that's great. Let's go ahead and change it back to 12. And let's see what else we have not touched upon. Um, I don't want to go into to advanced. Maybe we could do another call, but let's yeah. let's try to stick to the basics. Just using the yeah. plugin for regular yeah. layouts. Yeah. Um, you know what? I do want to show you one thing because okay. you're probably going to end up in a certain scenario. Now, one of the most difficult things for a lot of designers is trying to get everything to align. You want to get your body copy, the caption text. You want to get your headline. How do you make that? Uh, really align nicely and mm -hmm. I've actually never met a single designer that knows how to do it <laughs> actually I've yeah. met a lot of designers but everyone gets this wrong so let me just for the yeah. sake of this video show you how to do it it's very easy um, right. and it really shows you the power of grids why you should definitely be using it so um, let's pretend that we've been doing some sketches and we've you, you say that, you know what, let's let's set our baseline grid to 12. And, and, and the entire secret of making this work is finding the common denominator. So yeah. we can say, okay, you know what, let's make our caption text uh, have a letting around 8 pixels, maybe 8 on 8 or 7 on 8 font size. And the letting for the baseline grid might be 12 and headline might be 24 or something. So what you need to find out, you need to almost uh, look at it. What's the common denominator value, smallest common denominator value for all these different letting values? Because when we find that, we can simply take that value and multiply it. So Two. I yeah, so I already know the value is four. So if we take 4.2, okay. Uh, four yeah. times two, it will or, give yeah. us eight. Four right. times three gives us uh, 12 and so on. And we can adapt yeah. for the headline. Yeah. So what we can do is let me create a new layout here. Uh, I'm going to close this document here. Don't save. Okay, so let's go back to A4. And what we can do is we can simply enter the smallest common denominator value for the letting, which is four. Okay. And it's not looking good now, but we're going to do a couple of things and everything will make sense. So okay. we can see that the, the letting so far is 4.009 points. Yeah. We can also think about it as the height for our building blocks. Mm -hmm. So, when I go to subdivision here, basically what I'm doing here is I'm defining my baseline grid for my body copy. So okay. if I uh, select times three, it's going to give me 12.027 points. You can also right. do the other way around. You could say, you know what, I'm going to enter 12 and I'm going to divide it. Let's see here, 12, and I'm going to divide it by three. So our baseline grid is 12.027 points, but I find it a lot more complex to think that way. It's easier to smart with, start with the smallest value and multiply yourself upwards. 
I see. Yeah, so let's yeah. go back and let's enter four again. And I'm gonna take 4.009 and multiply that with three for my baseline grid. Okay. And the baseline grid is also what the body copy automatically snaps to. Yeah. Yes, so uh, let's just put some some margins and just some columns here. Let's see. Oh, okay. Can you go back to that uh, drop down menu again, those columns? Because that, that always confuses me. Okay, sure. You mean this one? Yeah. Okay. Click on that. No, I'm sorry, not that one. The other one that uh, was the uh, the columns, I think. Okay. This one? Yeah. Okay. This one, yeah. what <laughs> this, this is actually, it's scary. a dynamic menu that shows you everything that can be applied within your type area okay. for the columns. So if I go ahead and edit my columns here, it's going to reset my... Um, if I edit my side margins, it's going to reset my columns. That's yeah. because it's no longer mathematically possible to have exactly that okay. um, setting. Yeah, right. So I, I, I might find something else that works. But th what's really cool, all these drop downs really showing you what can be applied in this exact setting. I see. So you don't have to do any thinking yourself. If, if, you're oh. not, if you don't find for example, the rows, you're not finding anything you like, you can simply play around with your top and bottom margin a little bit, and boom, you have new settings that can be applied. Yeah, okay. So it's always going to take, okay. and what can I divide, what can I put there? Okay. So uh, let's go back, or let's go to paragraph and character styles, and let's take one uh, another look at this setup here. So I entered my smallest common denominator value, I multiplied the, uh, my letting with the subdivision. All these more uh, small small squares are mm. called subdivisions. Right. And if we go in and press Command K, and I think Command Eight or Seven, we can yeah. see that we have divide. Uh, we have uh, th three here. Yeah. Uh, so basically, if this value here, four point two four three, is the same as this value. So. Okay. Um, it's a bit backwards, but we've simplified it through the plugin. But what we're actually done is we've made, we have set up so that, let me just zoom in here. This is a module. You can see almost it has a thicker, darker mm -hmm. gray line. Yeah. So, and we've sliced it three times. So it's right. actually, if we go uh -huh. ahead, and uh, this is 12.027. Uh, we can see it's 4.243. It's mm -hmm. the same as 12.027 points. Let me turn on the rulers and change to points. And you can okay. see it's the same value for the height. Yep. Yeah. So I'm going to go back to millimeters and remove the rulers. And let's press Command K7 again. And it's the same value. So they're okay. really aligning exactly on the same location. No. Yes, so okay. now that we're looking at these values, we've entered all this and we multiplied it by three times. It gives us this value. Now let's go to paragraph and character styles. And I'm going to bring out the text tool, create a text frame here. Place some placeholder text. And I can change the font if I want to. Adobe Arno. Let's see if I have. Let's just go with this one. And okay. let's say 10 points for the font size. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to align and snap to the baseline grid, just as it always does. But here's the cool part. Because we identify the smallest denominator value, mm -hmm. and um, what we can do is we can go ahead and click Add New Style here. And it's uh, depending on what I select here, it's going to create, if you look at this paragraph style here, paragraph uh, palette. Yeah. And I'm just going to name this to 
um, small text. Now what you can do is uh, this title, if I click OK, it's going to, it's the same as this one. It's simply so that you oh. can identify if you have, let's say you have two, three uh, caption paragraph styles. Right. So uh, it's easier for you to maybe give it a identification or a suffix. Yeah. And uh, you, you can just say, uh, you know what, this is going to be my blue text yeah. or whatever you want to identify. Okay. Yeah. So let's go ahead and enter a font for this. Let's go ahead and select Accidents Grotesque. And let's say we want regular. So let's pretend now, let, let me draw a black square and let's pretend it's an image. Um, and now let's add some caption text to this. Uh, so let me just look at, we have regular that, and let's say we want seven and I'm gonna create a text frame. Now with this selected here, and with the mm -hmm. uh, caption text, I'm going to just start wherever I want. Now, the thing is with, um, I'm going to enter some text. It's not going to look good to begin with because we're going to have a giant letting yeah. value. Now, mm -hmm. here's the cool part. Um, when you do this, uh, when, you, uh, when you use this, when you use this menu here, it's going to give you... Um, a couple of different options. You can either multiply the baseline grid, which is 12.027 points times mm -hmm. two, three, four, five. Um, and you can also multiply the vertical subdivision, which is the smallest building block, the smallest mm -hmm. common denominator value. So yeah. if I go ahead and multiply it by two, oh, oops, I was in the vertical. Yeah. So yeah. it's important that you select the right group. Uh, yeah. Yep. And then let's go ahead and change this to eight. So we have uh, some page break here. Let's remove that. Mm -hmm. And okay. So what's really happening here is it's uh, using, um, if I go ahead and open this paragraph style and go to inlets and spacing, we can look that we can see that aligned to grid is first line only. This yeah. means that it's always going to snap to the first baseline grid and it's yeah. going to be applying whatever value you have for your lighting. Yeah. 8.018 points. Now, because that value is actually based on something, the smallest building block, it is going to align with the grid. Sure. Even though it's living its own life or whatever you want to call it. So, right, right, yeah. right. But, um, and what's real, the beauty here is that it does align perfectly with our body copy. Yeah. Not every row because that will look really bad. Yeah. But, right, right. But uh, every, uh, I think it's every five, uh, one, two, one, three. Yeah, four. every few lines it does yeah. align. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, and one, that's two. because the value repeats itself after a while. Yeah. Because everything we do is based on that value of four. In this Got case, 4.009 because that's the value that fits perfectly. Yeah. So uh, let's create a headline for this. Let's move these things a bit down. Okay, so let's again click on the add new style and let's select headline. And I'm just gonna click okay and it takes me directly to this and let's go ahead and use the same font as the caption. I'm gonna select bold let's say 20 and let's create a text frame here um, okay so obviously this is a let's let's make it a little bigger let's say i don't know 28 now, uh, it's not looking good because we're still using the letting value that is intended for our body copy. Now, yeah. what we can do here is I can simply change it here if I want and right. to use uh, whatever value if, if something fits. If I like something here, I can play with the value until I find something or I could, I could use a value from 
that is based on that small square, not the letting value. So the, there are actually two sections oh. here. This is the uh, baseline grid value that's getting multiplied. And this okay. value is the small uh, subdivision value. The, the four. One, the four times two, yeah. three, four, five. Yeah. Now okay. I wanna show you something cool now. If I go ahead and select custom letting, and let's see if I remember this right. If I hold down the Alt key, mm -hmm. I think it's Command actually, um, and I use the up arrow key, it's going to jump in increments of the uh, vertical subdivision. So it's jumping mm. in the value of 4.009. Huh. Yeah. So I can right. do this, I could go beyond those five uh, multiplication steps. Right. Uh huh. So let's say that, you know what? I really needed to multiply it by seven, but it's not in the menu. What can I do? Go to custom letting, hold down the command uh, key, use the up arrow key uh, or down. Wow. Uh, uh, yeah, so really fast way to get everything yeah. aligning perfectly. So uh, that's really the secret of getting everything perfectly aligned. Find that small building block and multiply everything on that value. This tiny little... Because if yeah. you get this right, if you're mastering the small squares, you can really build very complex layouts and understand the entire process that you're just multiplying this value over and over again. Yeah. So this is um, to answer your question, why is it good to have a document grid from edge to edge? Well, this is a great mm -hmm. example because if you're doing it, you know, I'm just going to throw this, uh, I'm just going to set this margin value, this, this, this. You're not really looking at the big picture when you're working right. on more complex layouts that require everything to look amazing, beautifully aligned. And uh, so, yeah. yeah, I just wanted, yeah. I had to show you that. And it's really good because a lot of designers, even when you go to a design school, the teachers do, does not really know this. So a lot of people don't know how the heck am I going to align everything? Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, um, let, let's see if you have any questions. Well, um, I think I, I have a lot of questions. I mean, for example, I couldn't do this right now. If I had to do this by myself, I, I don't think I could do this. So, uh, the thing that I'm – and I will study it until I do – am able to do it by myself. Yeah. But the thing, the thing that concerns me and that's always concerned me – from the very first time I ever used the plugin, you know, years ago, yeah. was how, how do you explain this in a simple way to people so that they don't immediately throw up their hands and just run screaming from the room? Um, well, um, first Now, I know all, there's the set the wizard. Yeah. The, and we haven't talked about it. Uh, yeah, but. You know what, that simply, this is a vision that I have to do it inside the plugin, but it's too early now and um, uh, I am developing another product which uh, I hope oh. to fund more further development of this plugin. But huh. when you select this layout wizard, it will take you to a web page. <clears throat> oh, right. So it, uh, so... Um, just to quickly go over this, not everything, but let's say that, you know what? Uh, I want my lending to either be an exact fixed value or an approximate value. So it's really almost like a hand handheld guide. If you say, you know what? I want fixed value, then it's yeah. going to uh, uncheck certain, uh, you, you can't select this one, for example, yeah. close or exact for the margins. Sure. So you can only do this. And depending on what you select here, it's going to enable this and, and so on and so on. And if you click on watch videos, I break down each, like this is approximate lending value, this is fixed. So there is a guide <clears throat> for people that want even further explanations to some things. But mm -hmm. to answer your question, like, um, I don't know if you were referring to this particular thing, but uh, I'm sure that people have uh, issues or problem aligning your baseline grid with your bottom margin. It's a classic. Or yeah. how, do you, how do you align your caption text to your body without looking horrible or, 
or, mm -hmm. or without you know uh, working with the grid is really like asking an architect why do you do a blueprint for a house it's the same thing basically it's all about planning and putting up the framework so that you're going to get exactly the result that you want now because a lot of designers aren't good with this because it's really <laughs> no but because it's it's an old yeah. art form that has died uh, it's not completely dead but it, uh, the old yeah. masters of grids they never yeah. reveal their never revealed their formula yeah so this is the only tool in in design that really does the work for you it shows you the values and everything but this is how people worked I don't know a long time ago yeah. before sure. you know even when they created for example the bibles or the the torah everything was mathematically perfect because it was divine they wanted uh -huh. everything to be perfect right. but um and here's the thing that nobody thinks about everybody works with a grid everyone as soon as you do a layout you're working with a grid but a lot of people think that the document grid is the grid and that's a misconception because yeah. the document grid is just one of few elements like you have the margins you have the columns you have the rows right. you have this yeah. and it's all about uh, creating your own document the way you want it maybe you don't mm -hmm. need columns but you're always working with the grid now why wouldn't you want to master the grid because you're always working with it as soon as you do anything you have a baseline grid you have mark boom you have a grid the question is how good is your grid how good is your layout how solid is it how much does it work um so i i i agree i mean i think designers want to work with grids for the most part but they don't want to be constricted they don't want to yeah. have to feel like um the the grid is telling me where to where to put stuff instead of me telling the the grid and so understanding really how to leverage this plugin is very important yeah. because obviously it can do that for you. Exactly. It can, it can work for you instead of you working for the plugin. Exactly. But you really, you really need to have a, a very full understanding of it. And I'm just, I, you know, I just worry about going into a client or a wherever and doing a demo and having people just, you know, I, I, I totally I totally understand. So the first thing I want to say is that um, you have to understand the grid. You, you don't want to be a slave to the grid. You have to understand. You have to be its master. You have to push it the way you want it. And you have to, for example, when I gave you this example that you find the smallest common denominator, you're all of a sudden in charge because you know how it works. But when you don't know these things, you're always going to be slave to the grid instead of the grid slave to you. So when you're good at grids, you never have to feel that you're losing control, you're constricted. It's the opposite. It gives you the freedom, but within certain frames that works. Yeah. It's a solid foundation. But the problem is that a lot of designers, they never, um, they never learn this. They never understand this. So they're always going to struggle with layout, move it a little pixel here, move it a little there, instead of saying, you know what? Instead of looking at the big picture and say, okay, my margin is going to be this value and my column is going to be approximately this. Now, what I do recommend when you're starting out is don't even, uh, don't even open the plugin. Just create your layout in InDesign. Okay. And then try to find like hints or the, the, the values that, okay, my margin is this, my letting is this and whatever. And then see like, can I try to get my grid and, uh -huh. uh, and, and content to meet in the middle? Right, Because right. instead of just opening the plugin and trying to do something... Now, I could do it, and if you've trained enough, you don't yeah. need to do that. But if you're completely new, create your layout without the plugin. Don't worry about it. Okay. And then look at it. Okay, I'm, now I'm going to create whatever I wanted, my end result with the plugin. What's the easiest way of doing it? And it comes down to mastering these different setup modes. Like, okay, should I break the, should I use like the value mode here? Or should I use this? So yeah, you have to 
take a couple of days, play with it, look at the videos, and I hope hopefully this video is going to be good for for people uh, to look at and um, and just practice. Basically, there are a couple of videos on the website, and uh, yeah, I think the thing to do for me would be to, as you say, create a very simple document and then reverse engineer it. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Go back into, make it look the way I want it to look and then go back and engage the plugin and figure out how to make the plugin match the layout. Yeah. You can, you can, right? simply, you can simply like, just make note of the values uh -huh. that you want. You know, my margins is this, my length is that, my column is this. Okay, how do I do that exactly or very, very close to it? Yeah. And simply do it and, and practice. Look at the videos and so on. Instead okay. of feeling that pressure that, you know, I have to get it right from the start, you can simply play around and yeah. let the plugin do the calculations. It might not be the exact values. Right, but it'll be close. But it'll be, it will be close, but you can actually do the exact values in some scenarios. Yeah. So. Uh, well, yeah, as you say, Unless you're very experienced with the plugin, you're not going to be able to start with a blank page and just immediately open the plugin and start putting in numbers, right? Um, you're just not gonna you're not gonna know um, that. It depends. Some designers are stronger in that thinking. Some are uh -huh. more that maybe you know what I want. I want to try the way that I've done it for so many years, and then I'm gonna gradually go over to the plugin and try to build it and and see but it depends it's not if some designs are really quick to just uh, throw out the old method and use the new yeah. use the yeah. plugin but um whatever works for you but the, it's just a okay. recommendation and if you want to okay. be really good at grids i would almost try to look at um magazines that you like and reverse engineer them take take out the ruler try to build it that's how i yeah. started in when I was very new to grid systems, uh, I just yeah. took books, cool design books or magazines, and I try to measure and reverse engineer and create a grid. Now, in many cases, they might not follow a perfect grid, but you can right. get something closer to that setup. Yeah, yeah, well, and, and again, I wanna be able to, to understand this for myself first, but also so that I can then explain it to other people and hopefully, sell people on the idea of buying this plugin because yeah. that's what you know we're trying to get other people to use it and you know that's good for me and it's good for you and and everybody but yeah. i need to really have a very strong uh, understanding of it first absolutely and we'll and we'll do more sessions no problem so okay. i want to show you something that i haven't shown you yet okay. and uh just for the sake of it, I think it's easier if I close this document and create a new one. I want to show okay. you image lines. I don't know if you're familiar with that yet. Yeah, I, I am. But just for the sake of having it recorded, yeah. let's, let's touch upon it. Um, so I've just um, set up a document here. I enter 12 for my letting. It's not really important. And I'm going to jump directly to paragraph and character styles. And um, let's apply some text here. And I want to talk about the top margin because a lot of people get it wrong. They don't understand how things work. Uh, so now we have our uh, body copy text here. And I'm going to apply some image lines here. And I simply do that by checking this checkbox here. And it's going to create these. Um, yeah, the green lines. Yeah. Uh, okay. Ooh. Too much to handle. Okay, <laughs> let, let's restart. Yeah. <clears throat> Have you been playing around with that uh, Adobe um, uh, XD, that uh, whatever that thing is? Yeah, for? yeah, yeah. It's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Is it cool? Is it, it, oh, really? It's, it's awesome. It's going to be big. And it's. Uh, I, I did help my brother with an app, so just doing some design. Yeah. It's really powerful and really? fun. But uh, there's going to be some cool updates coming to uh -huh. give it a more interactive feel. But uh, I, I really I really recommend designers uh, playing with it if you want to stay ahead of the curve for the future. But only if you're doing user experience kind of stuff, right? I mean, for a normal, I mean, I, I you can't... You can do a website design also with it. Like, this is going to do this or yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. If I were designing a website, I could use that to, to 
what to wireframe it? Uh, yeah, to to sketch, but it's not going to export sketch. and actually be. It's it's only a prototype yeah. tool. Right, prototype. Yeah. Yeah, but it's really powerful and fun, and, and uh, but there are other out there. Uh, I don't huh. know. I, yeah, I've I've seen others, but um, and they're probably ahead of Adobe. But let's see what Adobe does. It's free with the Creative Cloud anyway. So. Yeah. So let's try this again. Let's add some text okay. here. Okay. And I edited to 10 points. And let's apply image lines by checking this box here. And what happens is the following. Number one, it is creating a, uh, a layer called yeah. GC image lines. Yep. Yeah. If I uncheck this, you can see. Yep. Yeah. Now, you might be asking yourself, why is it placing it exactly where it's placing it? So it's actually based on the right. X or yeah. H height. Right. So we can see that depending on my font, it is going to put it exactly where it is. Mm -hmm. And that's very powerful. And if I go ahead and change it to X or H, I mean, it's uh -huh. going to edit that. And even if I enter my font size, 10.5, yeah. it's going to rearrange it. So. Oh, okay. I thought it only worked to the X height. I didn't know that you could change it to the the, the H height. Yeah, it works on uh, okay on both. But if you're okay. from another country, you're you're yeah. not using Latin le leather letters. <laughs> yeah, not leather letters. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you can enter a custom value here. Oh. Or if you you know like you know what it's a bit too tight. So if I enter, let's say, uh, uh, okay. let, let's check this box here again. Uh, let's say you know one. 1.5 uh -huh. you, you can find like you know what I want a little tighter or want a little more uh, space or whatever until you find whatever, whatever you're doing okay okay so let's say maybe maybe you wanted that a little tighter I don't know mm. uh, depending yeah. on some fonts because what it does it's it takes that font in the background creates um, outline and and it deletes uh, it and pushes back the value very quickly in the background into the plugin again and wow. places that exactly Wow. So, uh, yeah, this is why it crashed because it's doing so many stuff in the background. So it very rarely crashes, but it can happen because so uh -huh. many stuff is yeah. doing. So uh, let me explain how this actually works because a lot of people get it wrong. Now, the first thing I want to show you is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play with the top margin here. I'm just going to five, jump five steps. Now, these green lines and the image line is always going to, um, I don't know what you call it. They're always going to be placed on the same position. So if I jump one step, uh, if I increase to six steps here, it's going yeah. to jump down to this line. Oh. And uh -huh. the reason is because when you later apply the rows, it's going to take the spacing into uh, consideration, everything. Mm -hmm. So... Mm -hmm. Uh, when you apply image lines, the top uh, margin is always going to align with the image lines. Oh, I see. Now, there are some that don't like this for some reason. Not sure why, yeah. but they, they, okay. they don't want this. So I'm going to show you a little hack that you can do. Okay. So if you really want to get it to be placed on the baseline grid, what you're going to do is you're going to take this layer, you're going to copy it, and then right. you're going to go to paragraph style and you're going to uncheck it. So because it's called copy, it's yeah. not taking that into account into the plugin because it's not the exact oh. name. So oh, this allows you to uh, uh, still stick on the baseline, which is incorrect. But some people really want to do that. I see. But still um have image lines on a layer so that's one way to actually have image lines without making everything else mm -hmm. adapt to it right but i wouldn't do it but i have some customers that have asked how can i do this mm -hmm. for this i really need to do it so that's just one way so i'm gonna go ahead and delete this and then i want to talk about how to actually apply images when you've applied image uh, lines so uh, let's move up this text here. Now, you're seeing one really annoying thing here. You see it's that it's um, it should be placing the text here. It's mm. pushing it down one line. Oh, I, uh, sure. And I want to show you something. You know, when okay. I move up, 
eventually it was this is where i really yeah. want it now right. this is a setting that you can change in indesign so what i'm going to do is i am going to i'm going to delete this i'm going to save the document um i don't even know where i saved it okay uh let's see no i want to save it okay save as okay one let's close this now if i press command b i go to baseline options mm -hmm. and i press the x and select the x height for my first right. baseline create right. it should push up to the first line without me having to resize the text frame because that's, that's really annoying so yeah. because i have nothing opened and i click ok that's going to be the new default so right. let's go ahead and open this again and let's draw a text frame starting from the top margin uh, something like that and hopefully i don't know if there's a setting in I have to check if there's a setting in this here. Okay, it didn't save the default for some reason. It stored the setting in the document. Yeah. But well, it all it always for does. new documents. Yeah. yeah new, new document is going to yeah. change it to X height. So if I change right. it to X height and select the preview. Yeah. <sighs> okay, let's see. There is one of them. Okay, maybe it's fixed because. Uh, okay, uh, let's just see which ones it is. Cap height. Set. Okay, I was wrong. It's the one called fixed. Next it's going time. to push it up. Yeah. So that's um, can be worth changing. Oh, okay. So you have to resize every text frame on new documents. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about how to actually place the image lines or images yeah. when you have image. image lines applied. So yeah. what you want to do is you want to start on an image line mm -hmm. and the top margin is always going to be placed there okay. because we want a nice alignment with our X or H height. Mm -hmm. And we always want to end it on a baseline grid, right. which is where the text stands on. Sits, so yeah. we get a nice alignment at the, at the bottom here mm -hmm. and on top. So if we yep. look, we can see that it looks really nice. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, um, let's move on unless there are questions so far. Okay, so um, I think one last thing I want to touch upon is um, let's create a quick a quick layout here. And let's just apply something. And let's say we want our rows to be. You know, what's funny is, you know, I'm used to working with grids a lot, but I never work with the document grid. Mm. I, I always I I've never I have never in my life used the document grid maybe once or twice in InDesign. I okay. you know I use baseline grids and um, but I never I never use the document grid and I don't know if that's typical or normal or not. I but, think a I lot mean, of people I think a lot of designers don't work with the document grid. It's because they don't know it. It's like it's easier to just you know what this is the value I want because it's on a lower level as soon as you start mastering the document grid you're on a different level because when i showed you the common denominator value for example yeah. four where we created everything uh it allows you to create a lot more complex layouts so it's yeah, more no, to I... keep in mind yeah. when you're doing your layout like okay how should i plan my margins and all the other stuff like the yeah. gutter values instead of just Saying, you know what, this is the column gutter and this is this because it requires you to think and plan more. And this is why I think a lot of people might be struggling with yeah. working with grids, but they're already working with grids, but they're not working with the document grid. So it's, right. it's like they're jumping on one leg instead of running by mastering the document grid yeah. as well. It's almost like the final thing that a lot of designers, they never get around truly mastering. But once they do... They can create some amazing layouts. Yeah, no, I see it now, and I understand the importance of it. But, and, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna force myself 
of course, now to use it. But I think part of the problem, at least for me, is as soon as I see that document grid, it's like, I can't see my page. You know, it's mm-hmm. like there's all this stuff in the way, and I, I don't, I don't want to look at it. Yeah. But, but I understand it. <laughs> that it's important when you're setting up the document, and then you can get rid of it. You don't yeah. have to look at it. Yeah, before. exactly. And you can just right? bring it forth when you need it. So yeah. let me just show you something. We actually do have a hide grid button here, so it just right. brings forth the baseline grid and the margins and everything. It hides this. And uh, you can also select hide guides, which is going to hide the image lines, the yeah. columns or secondary columns and uh, rows and so on. Yeah. So uh, let's see here. I just want to show you something else. In the plugin here, you can add masters. Yeah. So I just want to show you this because I'm going to save my layout as a preset because that's really powerful. So I'm going to create another master. I'm going to click yes here. And you cannot edit the document setup, the width, height, or the letting or grid width. You cannot edit that from master two and following, only master okay. one. But know that when you're editing this, and yeah. if you have a setup on the following masters, you're, you're right. really resetting everything because everything you have uh-huh. applied is based on the document grid. As soon as you yeah. erase it or del- edit it, those settings are no longer possible to apply oh, so okay. that's good to keep in mind but okay. I just want to show you let's say I want to have different layouts here so I'm just gonna go seven eight nine nine and let's let's do six columns and let's say I'm happy so we got two different layouts here oh why does it keep uh, I need to buy a new computer basically because this is horrendous but Apple you, never creates you, are, an are, iMac. Are you using are you using a laptop or an no, iMac? No, I'm using an iMac, a really old iMac. I do have a laptop, oh. but Apple oh. hasn't released any new iMacs, so I'm just waiting for <laughs> the new one. I, me too. Yeah, so um, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what's going on. So I basically want to take a sledgehammer on this computer. Everything is just <laughs> messed up. So uh, let's see here. We have our, um, let's create this from scratch again. I have two iMacs from 2009, yeah. late 2009. Uh, yeah, this is my computer from 2009. I think this one. Yeah. So it's really, really, really not good. I, yeah. <laughs> so well, I put a solid state drive in both of mine and that that helps a lot. Yeah, me too. But still, I need did, to buy Did you? Computer. Yeah. So yeah. let's let's uh, let's look okay. here. Uh, we have the different masters here. Now yeah. it's working. But you know what? Let's just do another. Uh, let's do six here again. Okay. Okay. Now now it's working. As it okay. Should. So what you can do is it's really powerful. Is you can save presets. I don't. Are you aware of this? Yeah. And you've tried it. Uh, yes. Okay. For yes. the sake of this video, I'm just gonna show you. Okay. That you can either go with, when you're happy with your layout. Now it's good mm-hmm. to keep in mind it only saves the body copy one. That's the only paragraph style it saves. So you can either click on save here or you can go to presets and click save here. It's the same thing. Oh. So I'm just gonna click here and I'm just gonna name this to test and the client is Scott and uh, click OK. And it just gives you some information here. I'm just gonna hide that. So we have our different clients here. Now miscellaneous is going to create automatically. Here we have all of them. Now we only have the one for you. So I'm gonna close this. Right. Uh, actually just like no, don't say open. Okay. And let's go to presets and we have test there. If I double click on it, it's going to reapply that layout. So even if you were working on CS6 and you're opening in Creative Cloud, you can you can apply this um, this template. So and the beauty of this is you don't need to create a duplicate of the document, get rid of all the content or everything, anything like that. You just apply this setting. Boom, you have it and start adding the content without Having to now, I I noticed you did that not by going to the file menu and choosing new, but you went 
directly to the designer's bookshop menu. Yeah, when you when you have the plugin installed, you never need to go to new document. Okay. okay. Always go to uh, n yeah. the plugin or open plugin because it's going it to create way. a new document for you. And if you're applying if you're applying a preset, it's go just going to modify to that. So you never need yeah. to create a file new and then open plugin. Just go to plugin okay. directly. That's good to know. Okay. Yeah. So here we have our layout with the six, one, two, three, four, yeah. five, six columns. So now what if you say, I, I, I want a different document size. Yeah. You just that, go that, to, you, you just go to GC one, which it stands for Greek calculator master. Right. One, and right. you edit this. And you just change it there. You just change okay. it. But what you need to keep in mind, as I said earlier, it's going to break all the content. Right. So right. Uh, you really need to think that through. If you want to do that, go ahead. Mm -hmm. But it's going to reset the content. Sure. Sure. So uh, I want to show you something else. Um, if I go ahead and click on Apply Square Grid, yeah, uh, it's going to give you a completely square grid, but it's going to edit the document width. Okay. So uh, if you want a completely square grid, uh, you can do that. Um, let me show you something. I just want to refer to a certain video um, because sometimes you might want to have a, um, a, a square grid, um, but you also want to have image lines. And this is very complex to do, but there yeah. is a video here uh, in video uh, library called uh. Square Grid with Image Lines via Quick Mode. Okay. So uh, I, I really recommend people, if you're working on a catalog, you have a lot of text and you want the vertical and horizontal spacing between the images to be completely square, but you yeah. still want to align images and everything. And this yeah. is the only way to do it. It's very complex. It's very advanced, but still it's really cool. And people should look okay. into it just for yeah. the sake of yeah. mastering this. Yeah, no, I'm interested. I'm interested in that myself. Yeah. So, so yeah. Let me just copy and paste that link on Skype here so you have oh, it. Okay. Uh, okay, so, um, All right. but this is the easy way, but it's going to manipulate the document grid um, width. I want to okay. show you something else. Um, let's go ahead and just clear the rows here. Um, uh, let's see, what was I going to show you? Yeah, how to do a completely square grid. Square grid, yeah, in, with... In any document size. Now, this is really cool. Okay. So, okay. let's go ahead and just reset top and bottom margin. Now, what's good to know is that we cannot... Um, uh, let, let's say that we do not want to edit our document width. And we do not want to edit our document height either. Yeah. But what's really cool is that we can create, we can adapt our letting to any value that we want by unchecking fit letting. Okay. Now, what we can do, we can do this, go over to, um, you know what, we can stick to millimeters or inches, doesn't matter, but let me just show you what's going to happen. And let's say 2.5. This is what I want to have for my grid width. I'm mm -hmm. going to select, um, um, I'm just yeah. going to apply it here. It's going to give me 2.5. Yeah. Happened to fit perfectly, but doesn't matter what the value is here. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to select points and pixels because I want to, I want this value to change to match the letting value. And since the letting value is always in points and pixels, I have to change it to points and pixels here. Okay. Uh, okay. So I already know that, you know what, uh, uh, 7.87, uh, point letting is way too small for my body copy or whatever. Yeah. yeah. So let's say something around 12. Okay. So because I have to consider my body copy letting as well. So mm -hmm. here we have 11.906. Okay. And what I can do is I can simply select 11.906. Yeah. Tab uncheck. And here we have a perfect square uh, because, uh. because the bottom it gets pushed up and the letting we can put that to anything. So what we can do is since we cannot 
edit. Uh, we do not have 100% free hands or freedom with the yeah. document grid with. What we're going to do is we're going to set something as close as possible to what we want for the grid width uh, to be matched for the letting. And when I have that value, so I enter 12 here or whatever, I get the value here. I enter this value into the letting and by unchecking fit letting, it's going to give me the same mm -hmm. because as soon as I uh, uncheck fit yeah. letting, it gives me whatever value I entered. Sure. So now we do have a 100% square grid within a non-square document. So let's pretend I have, I'm just gonna, let's pretend uh, we're only going to be working with images, no text, no nothing. Okay. So you could do it this way. It's very easy. So uh, if I hold down the shift key, we can see that the value is exactly the same for the width and height. Mm -hmm. So regardless if I how, how I place my images, if I want like this or whatever, we're going to have the same spacing horizontally, vertically. Yeah. It's just going to look really nice when we work with yeah. images. Yeah, yeah. So the next step is the video that I referred to earlier. I'm just gonna, let's see. You know what? I'm gonna let people look at the video and go back to that. Um, okay. So if you also wanna have images, so you simply watch that video and it teaches you how to do it. So you get everything, yeah. uh, but it's quite advanced, but just check it out. It's a good educational material. Uh, so I think that we've touched upon okay. the first set of mode um, yeah. uh, a lot. And um, let me just see if there's something I missed. Um, you know what, just for the sake of it, let's talk about what sub columns is. So people get that understanding. Oh, hey. <sighs> okay. Okay, so let's just go ahead and apply some columns here. So you might ask yourself, what is sub columns? Doesn't even exist in InDesign by default. Yeah. So let's yeah. pretend that you're working on a book and you want to slice off. It's for the index pages. Okay. Um, I'm just going to increase the type area and reapply. Okay. So you're working on a book. You have an index pages at the bottom and you, you still want to work with the main columns, but you want to be able to have content within as well. Mm -hmm. So what these do is they simply, let's see if I find something. They simply uh, uh, divide the main column. Uh, uh -huh. You have two, one, two within the main column. Mm -hmm. So it really works from this edge to this edge. That's it. Okay. And then the next one is this edge to this edge. So it's not a total of two. It's two within each main column. One, yeah. two, one, two. Or let's see if we have it. But why, why would I use that instead of just subdividing the whole page into four columns? Because maybe you want to be able to work only within this area. Let's say you want to have, you, you still want to follow the main, uh, the main column, but you want to have smaller type within, within oh. this. Right. So, and it also gives you a, a totally different option uh, to create more advanced layouts. Yeah. Now, I want to show you secondary columns as well. If I go to secondary setup we have this here so let's say i want to have three columns because we're going to be working on a um, big story and this story on in this magazine is going to have a different layout i don't want to create a new master or anything like that just make it easy for me and create so it allows me to do a more complex layout if ah. i want to use both for example if i want to have text going from here uh, well, the text so, so you don't have to have two masters here. You can just do it in one master. Exactly. And you can create, let's, let, let's say that you know what? Uh, let me show you. Um, okay. I'm going to use both pages of the spread here. Okay. And then we're going to do... Let's see. Um, and I want to show you some cool trick here. If I look at the horizontal module here, we can see that the grid width is 11.906 points. Now I've created my text frame here. I'm going to select it and press command B and I'm going to select two columns and I'm going to go to, let's see how many do we have here? Two 
uh, boxes for our column. So I'm just going to enter 11.906 PT okay. times yep. 2 gives me that exact value. All right. And uh, let's go to type, fill with placeholder text. So we have for the main, this is for the main columns. Yeah. If I want to have three, I could simply select three. And uh, let's see here, we have one, 11.9. So we can see it's only one here and it's two here. And let's check preview and boom, we have it adapted to this. Do you ever, do you st still use um, frame based? Uh, baseline grids? Uh, no. You don't really need to no. do that. But, you know, I'm not really a designer in the sense that I sit and work. I'm more of a tool maker. So, um, sure, there might be some scenarios. But I think if you have a good grid, you never basically don't need to use it. Yeah. Because you've already yeah. thought about it. You don't need to yeah. put it. I, I, yeah, I think you're right. Because think, everything I, is going to misalign. So, if, you, if you're good with grids, you never need yeah. to do it. I mean, yeah. there might be some you're doing some informational box or whatever you might want to have, but yeah. if you're working in the way I showed you earlier, when you have fine common denominator, all that, you could probably avoid it. But yeah, there might yeah. be some scenarios where it's good to have, but I don't use it. Yeah, that that's what I was thinking is that I probably won't use it, and, and I don't use it very often anyway. But um, I would probably use it less if yeah. I build a build a really um, good grid, you know, yeah. Good grid with a nice yeah. document. So yeah. that's another reason for to oh, actually have okay. a good foundation or a grid. yeah. So uh, this is what I show you here is to answer why do we have secondary columns? Well, maybe you want to have more. You don't want to have this layout three columns through the entire magazine or whatever. You might want to have. You know what? Under this image, we're gonna have here. We're gonna have three columns, and then we're gonna have like. Yeah. yeah, whatever you, you you can create a more dynamic, exciting layout instead of just and you can do it within one master. You don't have to do 10 masters for everything. You can do a complex layout and stick to one master, basically. Uh, yeah, I see. Yeah. So, um, OK, uh, let's see. I think that we've gone through a lot when it comes to this. And, yeah, that's uh, probably that, that's enough information for now. What I need to do is just really start playing around. Yeah, I want to show you one last thing just to clear up. Okay. I'm just going to take five minutes or so. Okay. Let's go to modular. As I've shown you here uh, earlier, I, I was able to break the grid. I could uncheck fit letting and select where my baseline grid, the value. You cannot do this in this in, in modular and smart. But what you can do is something really, really powerful that I think a lot of people are going to enjoy. So let's go to millimeters here and let's say, you know what? I want my grid width to be 2.5 because I'm going to have uh, my side margins is going to be 20 millimeters. So I'm just trying to find a logical value. What, what, what am I going to enter here? So it's based on something I want later down the road. Mm -hmm. So if I click on calculate here, you can basically ignore this. This is more advanced stuff. You can just enter document width, document height, and the grid width, and just click on calculate. Okay. So I want to show you a little trick when it comes to the document height, because here is the document width that we set up, and this is the document height. Now, um, what you can do is, for me, it's easier to think in terms of letting value, baseline grid. So I'm going to switch over to points and pixels because it's going to input that value for that unit. So let's say I want 12 points for my letting as close as possible. And I've changed the points and pixels. I just click on calculate here and it gives me 12.027 points. Now, in some cases, if you have a really big document, because there are certain limitations to, um, what InDesign can accept. Let me show you something. Uh, sometimes it might look like this and doesn't look good. So what in the, what the plugin sometimes will do, it will uh, set a subdivision of two. So you can just go ahead and change it back to one if it happens. Oh. Yeah, good to have in mind. 
Otherwise, it's going to look like this. Okay. It's going to slice it off. So mm. we don't want that unless you're doing a really complex. Okay, actually, just press enter one. So now that we're happy, okay, we have something as close as possible to 12 and we have a 2.5 millimeter grid width. Let's see here, uh, 2.5 or whatever closest. Let me switch over to inches for people to get a, a feel for the values. Mm -hmm. Now, when you've done this, here comes the cool part. You can jump into smart. Now, this method I developed when I was helping a publishing company and the art director wanted 12 columns. He already know, you know what? I want approximately this for my margins. I want this for my column guards and I want 12 columns. Can we do this in a simple way? So I, it took me around two hours to give him exactly what he wanted. And I, I thought to myself, oh my God, if I'm struggling with this, can only <laughs> imagine my customers. So yeah. I need to find a method to make it lightning fast when you already know the amount of columns that you want so what we're doing here is we're working uh, the other way around we're setting up our type area and eating into the margins uh, let me show you so okay. basically we've set up our document grid in modular section here we're jumping over to smart and let's say that i want uh six columns i'm going to press tab or enter then it's going to enable the column width field. Now, as I start playing with this, it's setting up my columns. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. We yeah. have not applied the gutter yet, so it's not looking good. So let's increase with one gutter step. Okay. And then I can continue increasing the gutter. Oh, I mean uh, the column width. And we can see what the column width here is for each one. It's yeah. 0 0.886 inches. If I go to millimeters, I can see the exact values. And if I measure it, we can see it's 22.5 millimeters in the column width. So, yeah. um, super easy. There you have six columns. That's do you great. Want, do you want it wider? Okay. It can't accept uh, beyond a certain value, it cannot. Uh, right. anymore so you might get a warning dialogue saying you cannot go yeah. beyond this value yeah. but uh you can go ahead and you can play you know what i want give me a less wide column but let's increase the gutter or decrease the gutter increase yeah. the column width and you can also you know what i'm not happy with the placement for some reason you know what i want uh you see the outside margin is 22.5 Mm -hmm. But let's say, uh, you know what, I want it to be 25 or I want it to be something even yeah. larger. So yeah. you have to think about this method as a scale where if I increase this, it's going to decrease the inside value because right. we have a, only a fixed number or uh, a certain space that we can yeah. play with. Yeah. So let, let me show you. As I increase this value here, all the way to zero here, we have 42.5. If I start right. decreasing it, it's going to increase the inside. So whatever mm -hmm. I increase, the opposite will decrease. Yeah. So this way allows me to keep everything intact and just move it around as if it's freely right. moving around without having to, um, because in InDesign you have to, first you set the inside or outside and then you define whatever. You can't take everything and just move it a little bit to the right. Yeah. So with this, you can do that very easily. Wow. wow. And let's, uh, there are actually two ways of working with this. Either you do, as I just showed you, you enter, you know what? I want six columns or whatever. And I set up this, 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 or mm -hmm. you say, I want these column values. So either you enter the desired uh -huh. column or the yeah. desired, uh, margin value. So I'm going to go ahead and clear this. Okay. And I'm going to go to this field inside. You know what? I want something as close as possible to 20 millimeters. Okay. And it's, oh, okay. Fit perfectly because 2.5 is dividable by 20. Yeah. And in outside, you know what? I want something as 18. It's not going to fit, but it's going to give me 20. I see. So what we have here is a drop down right. option with the possible combinations that can be applied for columns within the type area. Okay, I see. So you have two methods. Either you set up your columns and the 
uh, margin will adapt to whatever space is left and you can move it around or you lock the margins in place and this menu here shows you what yeah. is uh, applicable I, within that. I see. I see. So I can go ahead and select three. If I want a secondary column, I could, yeah. to, I, I could select that. If I want to filter, let's say, you know what? I want to add something with four columns. Show me entries that have four. Okay, we have three results that can apply <laughs> four columns. So there we have it, four columns. And what's really cool is that I could play around with, um, if you see, if I play around with my margins, you can see that the results here will change eventually. So I can filter out. Did you see that? Now it's only two if I go. Oh, I see. So this value here. Yeah. It will change. Oh, that, okay. Yeah, so. Uh, I can instantly get a feel. Okay, you know what? I know that I want three columns or four columns. How many combinations do I? You know what? I don't like any of these. Let me go ahead and and edit. Okay, now I have three. I see. Okay, maybe I like this one. So uh, yeah, and just to I think it might be the last thing I show you. Um, yeah, or second last thing. Um, it, it's the same thing here with rows I'm just gonna remove the uh, no secondary columns and I can increase my gutter hmm. now one thing I would want to mention here is that if you're gonna apply rows go ahead and apply the image lines first and then come back to rows because oh. if you go ahead and apply um, image lines afterwards like this you're going yeah. to clear the roads because you have new uh, possibilities sure. that cannot be applied. So if you know that you're going to be working with images and text early on, apply the image lines and then move right. on with the rows. At least that you do it before the rows. That's the okay. important step. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and, and it works exactly the same here as this one, but it's for rows, top and bottom margin and so on.